what's up everybody happy mother's day weekend 2020 i am so so happy to have you here joining me tonight i have such a fabulous show lined up for this episode of just be you after dark with me your host mahogany runner i want to let everybody know that I was supposed to do this show at a very nice venue in New Jersey this month, but because of COVID-19, the coronavirus pandemic, I am not able to do so. But I decided, you know what, the show must go on. So every artist that initially signed up to be a part of this show, they said, you know, Mahogany, I'm gonna go on this show with you online. I want to thank each and every one of them for being here. You will meet them as we continue to show. But in the meantime, I want you to sit back. If you're like me, grab you a little glass of wine and let's have some fun. Happy Mother's Day, honey. Yes. Now, first, I want to introduce my co-host. For the first time on Just For You After Dark, I decided to have a co-host because this is such a big show. And I wanted to just have somebody to help me keep it lit and keep it exciting. He is a nice, fabulous actor. I mean, when I say nice, I mean not nice as like a nice person, which he is. But I mean nice like every single time he hits the stage, honey, he is nice. Every time he's on camera, he is nice. He's also a voiceover artist as well. And I want you to clap it up for me. Let me know you in the building as I welcome my co-host, Arthur Gregory Yu. <laughs> I appreciate the kind words, Mahogany. Good no evening. No problem, everybody. no problem. Welcome to the show, Arthur. Arthur, every, everybody, let everybody know where you are from, where you at, how you feeling. All right, I am Arthur Gregory Pugh. I am residing in Inglewood, New Jersey, and I am very pleased to be out here with you this evening. Hi. Nice. All right, everybody. Well, I'm getting ready to turn over this virtual mic to my co-host, Arthur. He is going to take it from here. You will hear and see from me a little bit later in the show. But in the meantime, in between time, thank you so much for showing up tonight for this show. Please tell your friends so that they can watch along with you. Start a watch party, honey. It's Mother's Day weekend. You can't go out to eat. You can't go to the mall. So this is a wonderful way to jump off your Saturday night. Arthur, it's all yours, babe. Why, thank you, Mahogany. I thank you so much. And it is my pleasure to be your co-host this evening. I want to wish all the mothers out there a very happy Mother's Day weekend. I hope that you're having a great weekend. I hope you're gonna have a special day tomorrow. And most importantly, I hope you're well and I hope you're safe. We love you all. We have a real nice show lined up for you tonight and we would appreciate your support by tipping the talent. Due to the coronavirus quarantine, our artists haven't been able to work and we would be grateful if you could drop a tip in our virtual tip jar. Now, if you're watching this on Mahogany's website, the JustBeYouFestival.com or her personal page, there's a link in the comments section below for you to tip the talent. If you're watching this on my personal Facebook page or my fan page, the State of the Art address, that link will be up there shortly. You can make payments by way of PayPal, Eventbrite, or Cash App. Anything you contribute would be greatly appreciated. And Mahogany is giving away a Just Be You thank you gift to the first 10 people who tip at least $5, $5, that big bag of chips. You can do away with it one night and help us in our cause. And hey, the gift just might be a big bag of chips. So it'd be a win-win. So let's get this party started, shall we? All right. Our first guest this evening is an actress, singer, and songwriter straight out of Mahogany's Just Be You Company. I had the pleasure of playing her father on stage three years ago, and I must say that I am very proud of her growth since then. Tonight, she's going to bless us with a vocal performance. So ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Miss Adora, Adora Danye. All right, hello everybody. My name is Adora Danye. Um, like you said, I'm an actor, singer, songwriter. Um, tonight, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, future moms, um, grandmas, even the fathers out there. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm sending blessings to all the families um, that are experiencing things 
throughout this COVID. And even if you aren't, just blessings just from me because uh, all I know is how to spread love. Um, tonight I'll be singing a Mother's Day selection called A Mother's Prayer by Celine Dion. I pray you'll be my eyes and watch her where she goes and help me to be wise. And help me to let go Every mother's prayer Every child knows Need to find a place Guide her with your grace Give her so she'll be saved. We need to find a place and guide her with your grace. Give her faith so she'll be saved. I pray she finds your life and holds it in her heart as darkness falls each night. Remind her where you Follow me on all social media platforms under the same name, Adora Danier. All right. Thank you, Adora. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody. Oh, there I am. Hello. All right, everybody. We're going to keep this show going along. And don't forget, everyone, to please tip the talent by clicking on the links below the, um, the broadcast. Now, as we all know, New York City has been the face of the pandemic. Our next performer lives in the heart of New York City, doing her best to stay safe in these trying times. And I'm sure bringing the laughter helps her, helps her get through it. Please welcome comedian Mireille Villarque. Hi, my name is Mireille Villarque, and I'm a germaphobe. These are interesting times for a germaphobe. As a comedian, I can't use my favorite joke, which is during. Um, intense, intimate wrestling, I would wear a mask and gloves. People just look at me like, oh, that's a good idea. It's not really shocking anymore. I'm not that germaphobe weirdo in their eyes. Yeah, these are interesting times. I am enjoying wearing a mask because it keeps me from having to breathe in people's 
uh, breath of fire if they've had too much garlic at lunch. The six feet of distance helps with that as well. I appreciate it. I have to admit though, the, my favorite part about wearing a mask is that people can't see my upper lip hair that's been growing for the last two months. Yeah, I haven't been able to wax it. I did try an at home remedy, a sugar wax. And by at home remedy, I mean that I literally went to the stove, mixed up sugar, water, and some lemon juice in order to come up with a sort of liquidy taffy-like substance that I used to just get the biggest whiskers. Because I myself was shocked when I came home one day and I looked in the mirror and I saw these monstrous, humongous whiskers right about here. And I, I just thought, why? Why didn't anybody look at me sideways? Like I was sort of a weirdo. And then I'm just like, oh yeah, the mask, the mask. As a germaphobe, I have to say that I've noticed that doctors have different feelings towards me. Some of them think I'm so cute when I ask for alcohol prep pads in order to clean off my cell phone, sometimes band-aids too. However, they don't think I'm very cute when they come in the examination room and I ask them to please wash their hands if they're intending on examining me or touching me in any way. And of course, <laughs> they say, excuse me, I just washed my hands with hand sanitizer and put on gloves right before I came in here to see you. And I say, yes, I understand that, but I was watching you as you entered and you touched that door handle, which is full of germs, so please wash your hands again. And they do this mental calculation, I can see it, like, oh no, a germaphobe, there's one at every shift. They do the calculation and time is important and of the essence, so they wash their hands. As someone who's attentive to germs, I'm happy to see other people become more attentive to germs lately. I do have some insider tips for people who are maybe not as experienced as I am when it comes to blocking germs. Uh, first thing I can tell you is never touch a germaphobe's elbow ever, ever. These things are full of germs because we use them to open doors, touch buttons in elevators, you name it. Also, I don't recommend touching a germaphobe shoe, especially the pointy part, because, well, I guess I can only speak for myself, um, but I use it to flush toilets in public restrooms. Speaking of public restrooms or other entry and exit ways, but specifically the restroom, if you see a woman hovering by the door and just sort of waiting there, she's not lost, she doesn't have temporary insomnia, and she's not trying to pick you up. She wants something from you, that's for sure. But she, what she wants is for you to open the door so she doesn't have to touch that door handle. If you see two women hovering by the door, kind of looking at each other sideways, they're both germaphobes and they're each waiting for the other one to open the door. If they look at you, hold your ground. Because in a matter of seconds, I guarantee one of them will whip out a tissue from their pocket and use it to grab onto the handle to open the door. It's actually happened to me. My mother isn't exactly a germaphobe, but she did enforce a lot of hand washing when I was a kid, and maybe that's part of where I got it from. I want to thank her today for giving birth to me. It was a miraculous feat. She says that, uh, that I was born within an hour once she got to the hospital. I asked her if she intended on having me and my brother, you know, so close in age because we're exactly a year and four months apart. And she said, well, no, but in order to conceive your brother, since I was having trouble conceiving, I just put on a fertility necklace and I got pregnant pretty quickly. So after I gave birth to your brother, which only took two hours, by the way, the doctor asked me what kind of, um, what kind of method I wanted to use to prevent further pregnancy. And she said, oh no, I don't need any birth control. I'm just gonna take off the necklace. And while me, me, here I am because of that, she made me promise never to tell anyone that ever, but I think I'm off the hook because I'm just sitting here in my room talking to myself, telling myself jokes. So no one actually has heard this information, right? If you wanna get in touch with me on Instagram, my Instagram is at one earring, really simple. Since my name is complicated, I had to make it simple. And I'm also on Facebook, but I'll wait. I think that Arthur will give you that information. Thank you and have a great night. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. All you mothers out there, um, you, you deserve to be acknowledged today. And I think on your children's birthdays, they should give you thanks as well. Thank you, Mireille.
very much. Thank you so much. That was very, that was very good. Oh my goodness. Uh, there we go. Okay. Our next performer is originally from Chicago, Illinois and loves telling jokes. She's now coming at you from Jersey City, New Jersey. Please welcome Akuya Doku. Hi everyone, um, happy Mother's Day. And I wanna give a quick shout out to my brother. His birthday is on Mother's Day, so he's gonna be one year older. So happy birthday, Charles. Um, yeah, uh, like Arthur said, thank you. My name is Akuya Doku. It's a Ghanaian name. My parents are from West Africa, Ghana. And I know it can be difficult for people to say, so I've been thinking about using a name that's a little bit easier. And my top choice is Oprah Winfrey, yeah. I feel like when people hear that, they're going to get really excited. <laughs> um, like I was saying, my parents are from West Africa, Ghana, um, but I was born in Chicago. So I like to think of myself as Ghanaian by blood, American by birth, and the greatest Beyonce karaoke singer at night. I swear, after midnight, you can't catch, you can't uh, keep up with me, Beyonce. I'd be like, to the left, to the left. I love her. I love her. Um, I want to say quarantine has been great for me, but uh, when it comes to my hearing, not that much. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine in Arizona, and she was telling me how she tries to keep, you know, clean while she's out and about running her errands and while she's at the bank. And I could have sworn I heard her say, you know, uh, after I go to the bank, I like to alcohol my ankles. And I was like, uh, oh, okay. So it threw me off because I know a lot of people are having like these kind of weird ways to stay clean, you know, like using Lysol disinfected and inject it into your lungs. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, but I was like, why don't you ask her what's going on? So I was like, why are you alcoholing your ankles? How come you just don't wear socks and then wash your ankles when you get home? And she was like, what are you talking about? I said, you just told me you alcohol your ankles. She's like, no, I just told you I alcohol my money. I sanitize my money after I go to the bank. I was like, oh, okay. I really need to work on my hearing while <laughs> I'm still in quarantine. Um, what else is going on? Well, one good thing about me being in quarantine is my cooking is fabulous now, which just means I'm cooking more. That's all. That's all. Uh, I watch, love cooking shows. I've been watching Cutthroat Kitchen, Triple Z, and my favorite, Chop. If you don't know what Chop is, it's this show where chefs compete against each other, and they make meals out of the ingredients in the mystery basket. And I've learned a lot from this show. One thing I've learned is that food critics are crazy. Yes, they're crazy because they put things in their mouth. I don't even think a Tasmanian devil would eat as a snack. I really don't. And then also, I've learned I don't love food. I just kind of like it. I do. Uh, <laughs> I've learned this because one day I was watching the show, and they pulled out a tub of squid ink pudding, and I was like, uh, what is that? Apparently, it's a black liquid that comes out of a squid, that the squid uses as a defense mechanism to escape its predators. And I guess there was a chef one day making calamari, and if the squid the chef was using, the black ink came out, and their first thought was, hmm, pudding. Now um, look, I get it. Some, I get it. Some people, you know, uh, well, I shouldn't say some people, some chefs, you know, <laughs> they like to be creative with their meals. And I get it. But just because something flies in the air, swims in the sea, walks the earth does not mean it has to become our next meal. You know, we walk the earth, but if some black liquid came out of us, no one's first inclination is, let's make food. Let's make food. But uh, that is my time. Thank you very much. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, doing bad TikTok dances at Laugh for Aquia. That's L-A-U-G-H-S, the number four, and then A-K-U-A. So yeah, ask me. Oh, happy birthday, Charles. <laughs> Get that last shout out in, I like that. Thank you, Aquia. <laughs> we appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. Okay, we're having a good time here this evening and laughter is the best medicine and we hope that we're here pleasing you to this evening. Okay, our next comedian is from Eatontown, New Jersey. And she has taken multitasking to the ultimate level. You'll understand what I mean when I introduce her front for, for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. 
That's right, Dr. Max Shepard. So I'm Max Shepard. I'm a mom, I'm an educator, and I'm a comedian. And one of the things I noticed while wearing this mask is that my iPhone 11 doesn't recognize my face anymore. Whenever I look at it, it keeps sending me to ISIS hotline. <laughs> I used to be able to turn it on just by looking at it. Now I've got to use my fingers to turn it on. Wait a minute. Seems like I'm a man here. I don't know. Also, as an educator, I noticed that during this Corona time, we're all trying to do our classes on Zoom. None of the kids show up, but I know where they are. I think they're all playing Fortnite. So I have to go into Fortnite to go and educate my kids now. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you tuned in. I uh, noticed that it's easier to meet men now. I'll tell you why. All I have to say is, I got a job. Ladies, even if you don't have a job, tell them you have a job. And here's some tips. One, you barter because they can't take you out to dinner, right? They can't take you out at all. So this is what you do. You tell them, look, you dye the back of my hair, all right, and you got points. Give me a manicure, you got points. Give me a pedicure, you got more points. So you work on a point system, all right, ladies? It works really well. Um, I was also a mom, I told you, I still am a mom. And uh, my son, I nursed him till he was about three, maybe five, okay, eight. And now he works for a company that makes lactate milk. So I really jump started his career. When he was a kid, I didn't want him to take any kind of medication, so I sold all of his medications to my friends. Now, when he turned 18, he sold all of his Adderall to his friends. So I jump started his career again. I needed extra money while I was breastfeeding my kids, so I became a substitute teacher. I went in the first day, and this was in New Jersey, guys. First day, it, the front row, they're screaming, quiero leche, quiero leche. And I'm like, what's going on? I looked down, and my shirt was soaked. I realized I didn't have enough to feed everyone, so I took off. I um, also wanted, I was a physics teacher for 20 years. So I wanted my kid to learn physics. So when he would fall and hit his head, I'd say, oh, that's gravity. When he would poop in the, in the uh, toilet, I would say, those are sinkers and those are floaters. That's density. And uh, the fact that your father's not around, well, that's friction. I um, learned a lot by having kids. And one of the main things is that kids are like cars. The minute they come out of the manufacturer, they lose their value. When my son was in my stomach, he was worth $20,000 on the black market. The minute he left, he cost me $20,000 a year. So what does that tell you? Don't wait too long to sell your children. If you get a Honda, it keeps its value. I love my son. I love all of you guys. Happy Mother's Day. If you want to reach me, I'm MaxShepherdComedy.com. Reach out. Thanks. Thank you, Max. Max, you are amazing. Everybody that's performed so far. Oh my God. Thank you. So I'm over here cracking up, keeping my eye on the feed. We got so many people in the building. Shout out to my homegirl, Nikenya in Michigan. She's a mom. Happy Mother's Day, Nikenya. Shout out to Dale, my hubby, for setting up all my lights and everything. I know I was getting on your nerves, but thank you anyway. Shout out to my son, DJ, who's not bugging me and asking me for things on Mother's Day weekend. I appreciate you very much. Shout out to everybody that's in the building. Let me know you're in the building so that I can shout you out. I want you to let me know what city you are representing tonight. We are all stuck in the house. We cannot go anywhere. And I appreciate you guys joining us for this special episode of Just For You After Dark. So for those of you who are just now tuning in, my name is Mahogany. I am the creator, the producer, and the host of Just For You After Dark. 
And I started this show because I wanted to keep everything positive online. I know that there's a lot of negativity that's swarming around. We got germs swarming around. We don't need to pile negativity on top of it. So Just For You After Dark is also a podcast. And in that podcast, I talk a lot about relationships, okay? Stuff that people kind of like shy away from, like intimacy, sexuality, and all of that good stuff. And I go deep when I talk about that on my podcast. If you want to listen to some of my episodes, go to my website, mahoganyreynolds.com. Now, author told you guys at the top of the show that I started this thing called Tip the Talent. And the reason why I did that is because I want us to show some support to these talented artists. They are literally out of work. They have not been able to perform probably since, gosh, I would say maybe February, if they were lucky, March, that's a long time. So I'm going to be splitting those tips equally amongst all of them. Now, I know when you go to Starbucks, okay, and you get your frappa latte, luca luca with a splash of cinnamon and a shot of vodka, I don't know what y'all order. I don't eat at Starbucks, but I know you guys tip those people for making you a cup of coffee. I know you guys can tip these artists for making you smile tonight. So click the link. It's in the comment section. You can do PayPal or Cash App. Look, if all you got is $2, hey, we'll take it. If you got $5 and you the first 10 people to tip $5, I got a Mother's Day goodie bag that I'm putting together for the mamas. And part of that bag is going to have one of these, okay? So I have these very fabulous lace mask honey and they are absolutely oh yes mothers honey you can really just just be you after dark with one of these on child so i'm going to be putting that in the bag along with some other stuff so i'll be keeping my eye on you know who's making that tip and i will send that out to you i'll just im you and get your information all right well i'm gonna stop talking and i'm gonna get a mic back over to my host my co-host author gregory pugh author take over baby thank you Mohammed. just to confirm about that mask right there um that's not for outdoor use correct oh okay so this hold on let me grab it <laughs> okay so this is it's a couple of things you can do with this okay all right so this mask is really you know for your eyes right Look right at that. Uh, hello okay happy happy birthday Oh, the whole cat woman oh, action. You have a long day at work. Oh, oh yes, indeed. You know, oh, this all right, is, all right, this all is, right. This is really, just for you out the dark. You know what else you can do to be cute? You know how you have to put those little the mask on your face whenever you got to go to the grocery store. That is not cute. Okay, you can put this <laughs> over your mask. Ah. Oh yes, honey, and be a little fabulous when you go get your groceries. So it's a couple of things you could do with this, and it's gonna be some other stuff in there. But I'm just saying that is something that's super, super, super fly. All right, did I answer your question? A nice little connection at the supermarket, just as long as you keep six feet away. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, now, all right, author, finish wrapping, finish the show, have fun. Everybody, let me know you're in the building so I can shout you out. Mwah. Mwah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The great Stevie Wonder will celebrate his 70th birthday this upcoming week. And tonight we will hear a rendition of his song, Knocks Me Off My Feet. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Adora Danye. Hi, everybody. Are you enjoying the show? I hope you are. If so, give it a like. Tip the talent. Uh, we got some Stevie. I see us in the park, showing the summer days of imaginings in my head. With words from my heart, told only to the wind, felt even without being said. And I don't want to bore you with. My troubles, but there's something about your love 
that makes me weak and knocks me off my feet. Something about your love that makes me weak and knocks me off my feet. Knocks me off my feet. I don't want to bore you with it. Oh, but I I love you, I love you. I don't want to bore you with it. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you more and more. We lay beneath the stars under a lover's tree that's seen through the eyes of my mind. I reach out for the part of me that lives in you that only are too hard to find. And I don't want to bore you with my trouble. But there's something about your love that makes me weak and knocks me off my Something about your love that makes me weak and knocks me off my feet. Oh, it knocks me off my feet. And I don't want to bore you with it. Oh, but I love you, I love you, I love you. I don't want to bore you with it. Mama, I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you very much. Once again, every uh, social media platform, SoundCloud, Instagram, Facebook, same name, Adora Danye. Um, once again, I'm grateful for um, being here. Shout out to all my supporters, my family members that are watching. Um, and yeah, Happy Mother's Day weekend. Thank you, Adora. You're welcome. Great job, great job. Okay, back to the comedy right now. Our next performer is a veteran of Mahogany's Just Be You Cracking Up comedy series from New York, Newark, New Jersey. Jersey is representing tonight, and I'm proud of that. Inglewood in the house right here. From Newark, New Jersey, please welcome Deanna Kobe. Good evening. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, does it look sexy? I wanted it to look like we're like at a hookah lounge or something. <gasps> Saturday night after all. I don't know if you guys heard. <laughs> Takashi69 was back in the news. Oh, <sighs> yeah, apparently he's in the witness protection program. But they found out where he was living. Yeah. Apparently, his backstory was that Lil Wayne and Rainbow Bright had a baby. Yeah, he was Lil Bright. <laughs> and apparently, his Lil Bright ass got caught. <sighs> so now he's got to go back into witness protection program. I don't know if you remember why he had gone to jail. And there was a big hullabaloo because apparently he was a snitch. I was shocked, to be quite honest. I never thought that he was a snitch. Such an upstanding gentleman. He had those beautiful songs like Scumbag and Dummy Boy. I wonder if the movie that they'll make about him will be called Snitcherella. <laughs> That'd be fun, but... Oh, well, hmm. so I've learned how to bake banana bread. Wow. And I think I've eaten my weight in banana bread while in quarantine. It's great. Uh, my dating life has improved tremendously. Yeah, people are hungry. 
And it's like this beautiful relationship where you know you never actually have to go out with the person. You can just talk with them or text with them and things are perfect. And you stay home in your stretchy pants eating banana bread. <laughs> oh my goodness. Meerkats, yeah, I identify with the meerkat society. Aren't they cute little animals, little chitter? Chitter, chitter, chitter. Oh, I love meerkats. They're matriarchal. I don't know if you guys knew that. They live in these little mops and there's an alpha female. And uh, any female meerkats that live in the mob that haven't procreated, they banish. <laughs> they banish them from the mob, yeah. I get it. I don't have children. And people are like, oh, how are you quarantining by yourself? <laughs> don't you get lonely? <laughs> like, no, of course not. <sighs> I'm an excellent conversationalist. I don't know. It's crazy. My parents Oh, they're so cute. Yeah, for Mother's Day. Oh, my poor mom. Normally, she spends every Mother's Day at the shooting range. So this year, she's just going to be at home with my dad. <laughs> Ooh, that should play out fun, don't you think? Joanne is a Capricorn, and my dad, John, is a Libra. So if you follow astrology, ooh, <gasps> troubles are brewing. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that I really have enjoyed Netflix. I can't help but not love the Tiger King. Have you watched the Tiger King? That shit made me want to be a libertarian. I'm telling you, <gasps> tiger people are wild. Ugh. I guess you got to be a little wild. I don't even wear tiger print underwear. <gasps> Miss Mahogany, though, she looks sexy in that mask. Ooh, I really like that. You could like dress it up a little bit. Like I said, because when I went to the grocery store, I could just tell people have been cooped up. You could smell it in the air. <laughs> people are hungry. Oh. <sighs> but it's fun. It's fun. Builds up for anticipation, don't you think? I think so. I don't know. I mean, dating's always hard the older you get. I mean, at this point, it's like grocery shopping right before a blizzard. <laughs> You're like, what's left? Nothing. And anything that is left is dented. So now you're just left to online interactions with people, which is probably much more convenient because it'll just play out and end and you'll never, like I said, actually have to spend any time with the person. That'd be terrible. My parents have been married for about 49 years. Oh my God. Yeah, they hate each other. Oh, they're so cute though. My siblings and I, we have a pool going on who's gonna do the other one in. But they're having a really fun time. Um, I love them so much. And my little niece got that app, TikTok. Have you guys been doing TikTok? It's pretty aerobic. All these fun, weird little videos and dances that you can do. You're like, oh, great. TikTok and everywhere. <gasps> oh, God. I don't know. My niece, though, I was a little bit worried because um, when she got TikTok, she's 10 and all of her friends, like they're obsessed. They're like, we need followers. We have to get people to follow us. And I was like, oh, that doesn't sound like a great idea. And it turns out that, you know, they were just letting anyone follow them. And they had like millions of followers from like all over the world. Oh, I think though childhood celebrities grow up really well adjusted, right? You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I was online at the grocery store and it's super cool now because they put down those lines of tape. So you have to like wait out online to get in the grocery store which I love, it makes me feel cool, makes me feel like I'm back in the club, <laughs> very fun. 
you know, it's like, when am I going to get called to go in? You know, if I slip this guy a 20, will he let me get in line before everybody? It's, you know, it's been a minute since I was at the club. Yeah, the last time I was at the club, I really was in line for the bathroom. Yeah. All the girls standing in the line for the bathroom. I love that song. Oh my God, I love that song so much. Yeah. I don't know. I gave myself a quarantine haircut too, which was super exciting. I felt really fucking, oh, part of my language, powerful that I was like ready to cut off all my hair because I was not about to like have the half gray, half regular hair. So I was like, let's just do this. And it's fun. It's really actually very manageable. So shout out to all the short haired mamas who are watching too, girls. What? We could get it. Yeah, we could. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. So you guys are awesome though. I love you so much. And this was super fun, super, super fun for me, you know, and I hope you don't mind that I was picking on Takashi. You know, I have so much respect for him. He can walk around with rainbow hair and rap about things that are illegal in 39 states. So, ooh. He's got something, he's got something going for him, but I love you guys. I hope you have so much fun. Happy Saturday night. Thanks, Mahogany. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you so much. Great set there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's time to bring out the big to bring out the big guns, we had to look outside of New Jersey. This is an on the rise comedian out of the great state of Maryland, but he does have roots in New Jersey. So we had to keep it, you know, in the family somewhat there. He's another veteran from the Just Be You Cracking Up comedy series. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andrew Barrow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yo, this is so strange, but we're going to make it work, right? Uh, I mean, normally I would have a haircut or something, but you know, salute to COVID, believing everybody inside and bringing us all together like this. This is, this is comedy in its purest form right now. This is what you get right here. <laughs> Oh, this Corona is interesting. I'm judging people in other ways now. I don't know if you all are. Um, if you are outside and you got like a blue mask or like one of them little white ones that construction workers wear, yeah, I'm judging you. Because all this time we got in the house and we are all, we all have access to the internet. Nobody can find one that can be sewn. No, you don't want to learn how to sew on YouTube right now. Nah. You just want to go ahead and keep on disposing the blue mask? No, man, I'm judging you. I'm sorry. That's this. That's just me. I'm, 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 I'm. Ew, look, <laughs> people don't want to stay inside. It's interesting. I can tell how they don't want to stay inside by what you're buying in the store. Yeah, this dude at Walmart the other day had a cart full of Pepsi. Not water. Not anything essential, toilet paper or paper towels or disinfecting wipes or Lysol. No, Pepsi. And it was uh, 12, cans in a, in, in, 12 cans in a case, and he had 12 cases. That's 144 Pepsis. Too many, my guy. That's, that's ridiculous. A woman's at the store buying pillows. No, okay? Right now, upstairs, in my room with my lady, we got about nine pillows on the bed. I know y'all got pillows at home. No, no. St this is why you need to stay inside. If, you, if you're not going out to get anything essential for real, and you want to go out and get pillows and Pepsi, you need to stay inside. That's a problem, okay? 
Everybody's in a rush to get outside and be social distant from each other. You get what I'm saying? Because when we were outside, when you really think about it, what were you doing when you were outside? You were at Starbucks probably or doing whatever you want to do and you're on your phone, ignoring social distancing. And now that somebody's telling you we can't do it, all of a sudden you want to run outside to go be more social distant. No, stay inside, okay? The people that are watching this, you all are smart. Keep, good job. You need to talk to some other people though because this is just ridiculous. My God. Also, salute to uh, Cat in the Hat. That's what my mask is. Yeah, that was that was given to me. Mm -hmm. Happy Mother's Day, guys. It's a strange Mother's Day, but Mother's Day nonetheless. I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you all sent out your cards and did all that. Um, Lord knows I'm late on that one. Sorry, Mom, I am. <laughs> the cards are coming. I'm just, you know, I just didn't do it on time because, I mean... I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I love my mom. I miss her very much. And uh, she's far away from me right now. She's all the way out in Georgia and um, she retired. She retired, I think, what is it now? Two years, I think she's been retired. She moved out to Georgia and she's living her life and uh, she's trying to find things to do. You know, oh, she doesn't want to work anymore. No, she worked for 35 years. She don't want to do that no more, probably longer, right? But she wants to volunteer, keep herself busy. So she's been doing, you know, jazzercise and enjoying herself. And she's like, well, I need to find something to do. So she's like, I want to work at the hospital. Maybe I'll volunteer at the hospital for a little bit. And then she goes, but I don't want to work. I don't want to be around any sick people. And I said, well, maybe, maybe the hospital's not for you then, you know? Maybe you should go do something like, I don't know, volunteer at a gym, you know, do something like that. Maybe find you a why. You know, do that because the hospital, people go there because they're sick or they're hurt. So, uh, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but she's a complainer. That's my mom. She's a complainer. Um, a little TMI. She probably won't like this. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's look, this is, this is my set, all right? <laughs> she, had, she, had, she, had, she had hemorrhoids a little bit. Now, people get hemorrhoids, okay? Other people probably watching this, you probably had hemorrhoids too. And, you know... Her, her, her ass hurts, okay? It, it, it hurts. And uh, my brother, <laughs> who's staying with her right now in Georgia, he's like, yo, mom is a real complainer. Like, she's telling me that she's up at 2 a.m. in the morning just walking around because she can't sleep because her ass hurts. And it's like, well, what do you want me to do? You want me to wake up with you and walk around too? Like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I never had hemorrhoids. I mean... You got a donut or something? I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you try to give her a suggestion, like, well, you know, why don't you take a bath, take a nice hot bubble bath, and you know, maybe the hemorrhoids will ease up a little bit or something. And then she had the nerve to say, Well, I don't like baths. Who, who, who doesn't like baths? You don't like a bath, bro? After a long day of work? No? Nah? You don't want to sit in a hot tub, right? with a wine, you know, maybe a little something to preference. I don't know. I know we're supposed to keep it classy, but I mean, come on, man. This, this is, this is, this is Andrew. I'm sorry. This is, this is, this is comedy in its purest form. I'm telling you, <laughs> but I love my mom, man. I miss her. I miss her. I miss her so much. Uh, I'm actually dating uh, a mom. That one is interesting. Um, because she has two kids and uh, I think I think I'm in the gang because of these because of these kids I'm not gonna lie to you uh, kind of happened out of nowhere I don't know when it happened but I, 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 I think I really think I'm in the gang and I'm not like I'm from the suburbs don't get it twisted like I'm not new to gang culture like I've been in the gang okay I was in a gang all right I was in the gang for a while you know and <laughs> Me, you know, I was a, I was an Oakland Mills Dolphin, you know? We were a swim team, and uh, <clears throat> but we ran like a gang, okay? Me and my flippers, all right? We roll up on this, on this pool, on this pool, and we'll give y'all strokes all day in the pool, getting it. I was in the gang, man, I was. <laughs> and I was like high rank in this gang on this swim team because 
you know, I'm black and I can swim. So off rip, I was, I was cooler than everybody. <laughs> you know, they used to say I was a, uh, I was a rare flipper. Okay. You know, yeah, they called me, they called me nigga. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. For the sake of the joke, it's funny though. It is. It's funny. All right. <laughs> but I used to have to do things for the gang, man. And I didn't want to do things all the time, like go in there and, you know, do that 50 freestyle. And it's like, all right, well, here I go. Swim in that 50 freestyle. And then, hey, get in there and do the breaststroke. All right, here I go, hitting them with the breaststroke. And, you know, we never, we never won. We never won, ever. It was, it was, we were bad. We were really bad. <laughs> but this new gang I'm in now, is with my kids and they look, they, I mean, they look at me like, what you doing here? And I'm looking at them like, I mean, I came here for your mom, but I mean, well, I, I, I guess I could be here for y'all too, I guess. <laughs> and they look at me like, I mean, what you here to like, you know, be here for us, you gonna ride for the gang, you here to eat your snack, you know, eat all the snacks and it's like, well, you got a lot of snacks, you do, they, and they're and they're good snacks too. I mean, the fruit roll ups and the chips and the cookies. But I mean, I'm here for y'all too. Yeah, I do like those snacks though. I do, <laughs> but I'm definitely I'm definitely in the gang because of them. I ride for the gang, and uh, it's it's interesting raising kids when I I mean I don't I don't have any of my own, so I'm raising two children, and you know, they look up to me and stuff and they, they, you, this is the thing with kids that, that I'm learning. Uh, they don't stop eating. When, when do kids stop eating? Can somebody tell me that? I need to know that one because every, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, they are asking for more food and more snacks. Okay. They're going to eat everything. All right. And the perfect example of this is my son, he came up to me the other day. He said, we didn't have anything to eat today. I said, well, what did you eat at the daycare? Because I definitely saw you eat two helpings of Franks and beans, but you didn't have anything, huh? But all of a sudden you see me here with Taco Bell and now you're like, you know, we didn't have anything to eat today. No, man, you're not eating my food, all right? You already had your food, now this is mine, okay? They just wanna eat, all, they wanna eat everything. I don't understand it, I can't take it, okay? It's killing me, it really is. And then the way, his way of thinking is so bizarre to me. And mom, I apologize, I do. I probably put you through some stuff. Oh my goodness, man, it's, it is, it is, it is, it's, man, it is, it is hard. And I'm, I have, I look, and look, and I, and I smoke weed, all right? And I can smoke as much as I can. And I still, this is still, it is nuts, bruh, okay? You tell them not to do something, right? Don't touch that. Hey, don't, don't, don't do that, right? And then within five minutes, he just, he has to go do it. But I can't fault him though. You know what I mean? Like if I wake up at 3 a.m. and I can't sleep, I would eat something, you know, to go back to sleep. Yeah, but you, you're four. You can't get up at 3 a.m. and just go eat something. No, man, you can't do that. Hey, don't touch that. Hey, look, don't do that. Don't do that. I feel like in his brain, he's like, well, look, man, you told me not to do it. I feel like, shh. I gotta do it, you know? I gotta see what's happening. I gotta, like, you didn't, you said I can't do it, but like, I mean, it's not like I'm hurting anybody. I'm not doing anything wrong necessarily. It's like, right, but I told you not to do it. You get what I'm saying? It's a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so much. And then we got the girl and my daughter, She's, she's basically a grown woman, okay? And it's scaring me, it's, it's, it's wild, okay? The other day, she got her hair done and she told me that her hair was slayed by the gods, okay? That's not, you're six, I, you're, not, you're not 25, you're six. 
and you said that to me. That's whoa. That threw me all. You, your hair was slayed by the gods. I don't even know what that means. Okay, this is the most hair I've had on my head uh, in a long time. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have hair. So whoa. Okay, my edges is slayed. What is happening? What? How old are you? How old are you? Sometimes when the boy, sometimes when he talks to me, I feel like I want to be like, yo, you want like you want a beer or something? Like, are you good, man? Like you, you, you sound like you sound like you're 28 right now, but you're four. It's throwing me off. These kids, they're so much more grown than they are. Okay. And I know like there's certain things with her, like we'll be like, hey, um, you know, when you're singing certain songs and stuff, don't say the curse words. But I know when she's by herself, I know she's cursing. Like I know she is. <laughs> I, can, I can hear her. I can hear her in the room sometimes. And I hear her, you know, with the with, with the slight whisper of nigga or like shit. I hear you cursing. I hear it. Like this girl is grown, man. It's bugging me out. <laughs> she's so grown. Oh my goodness. And now, right now, you know, because they're everybody's home. You know, we gotta we 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 gotta teach them. And I mean, salute to all the teachers out here. Okay, your job, yeah, you need you need three months off. You do, you need you need all the time. It's tough and it is it is I like 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 <laughs> she's reading and you're trying to help her read and she's asking you what this word is, but she doesn't know that word, right? So she's asking you, and as you're telling her what it is. Then she's like, oh yeah, I know that. And it's like, but how, then, okay, then, but, but what? And then you're trying to tell me, then you're trying to pronounce different words and you're saying it all wrong. It's just taking so long to do this book. This book is 20 pages, all right? It should take us like five minutes to read this book. It is taking us 30 minutes to read this book, all right? You gotta help me out. My patience is, and and and, and look, and, and, and same thing with my girl, okay? She's, She's losing her mind slowly too because it's like, yo, what what is happening? You you try to give them something to do and you know they know how to do it, but then they want to act like they don't know. They be like, um, 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 and it's like, look, we could put this in for two hours and be done, but if you want to sit here and act dumb, we're gonna be here forever. And it's right now we're here forever. Okay, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's so much to raise kids. I never realized that before because I never raised any kids. I, it's, 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 I've just been worried about self. But man, I probably put my mom through some shit, you know? Like, it, it's tough. And even like from being a kid to, you know, middle school, high school, like I probably put my mom through just, just dumb stuff, just doing shit. Because and it's and you don't you don't mean to, but when you're when you raise kids, you realize like, holy shit, like this is this is hard. This is pretty hard, okay? It's tough. And I'm you know, I've never I've never dated a mom before. It's that's that's a first for me, you know. And we were long distance for a while before I came out here to Maryland. So I would we were doing the whole traveling thing, you know, whether it be a train or uh, I don't like the bus, but unfortunately, one time I had to take the bus. And I was, when I was getting ready to come out here to Maryland, I'm almost out here, and you know we're still together. I still I have no look. It's 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 definitely look. Long distance is hard, but if you're with somebody who really is for you, and you all just mesh, it just works. It does. It works. Like we yeah we had arguments and stuff, but it just worked, and. This one time I did have to take the bus. And uh, I mean, I don't wanna I don't wanna say the name of this bus company on here. So I'll just I'll say something else. Um, I'll call them Greyhound, right? So I took the Greyhound bus one time to Maryland and uh, taking it back to Jersey, because that's where I was at the time. And I get up there and I'm there early, on time, ready to go. Boom. And get up to the front. I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. Now the guy at the other desk over here at the other company, he's like, hey lady, you got a customer. So she looks up from her phone and she's like, 
huh, now I just, I just know this isn't going to go well, right? Hey, I just want to know where this bus lines up. Uh, over there. Goes back on her phone, right? Bus is supposed to leave at 2.45. I get in line. I'm ready. Boom, boom. Okay, they announce it. Yes, we're getting ready to load up. Boom. And then 3 o'clock comes around. I'm like, all right, that's fine. They said it's going to be late. That's cool. Then 3.30 comes around. And I'm like, well, you know. Where's the, I mean, where's the bus? You know, it's been, a, it's been a little bit of time now, right? And they get back on the thing. They're like, hey, uh, I don't know when the bus is coming. It's coming when it's coming, right? And then there you ask somebody at Greyhound for help, right? Uh, they all suck at their job, all right? Excuse me, I just want to know when this bus, I don't know. Excuse me, I just want to know, I don't know, right? Now look, Greyhound slogan should be called Greyhound. We leave when we leave. Greyhound, I don't know. Greyhound, you tell me, nigga. Like this is like Greyhound. It was the it was the absolute worst experience. We didn't get on the bus till six o'clock, right? Then we get on the bus. There's a dude on the bus, and he's like, "Hey, uh, you know, when are we leaving?" Bus guy says, "Um, look, I'm gonna get off. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and do what I'm doing, and then we leave." Guy finally goes on. He goes, thank you, finally, right? And then the bus driver did not like the way that he said that to him. So now before he went to the bathroom, he's back over here and he's like, hey man, that was disrespectful. Um, I need you to, you know, apologize. Guy says, nah. And uh, before you know it, <laughs> we had a whole thing. It was a, it was a big, nice fiasco. Uh, I didn't get home till like 11 o'clock at night because it was a whole, the bus driver didn't want to leave or anything. But I tell you one thing, she is, uh, she's a strong mom. I've never dated anybody like her in my life. And uh, she's <laughs> and she does a good job. And um, I have to wrap it up. That's what they're telling me. So I'm Andrew Barrow. This was fun. Uh, I've been doing this on my IG, on my Instagram for like maybe the last month. I call it Stand Up in the Trap. You can find me on Instagram at Drew Does Stand Up. And I do more of these. I mean, I, 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 I can't stop. I can't not do comedy. So thank you. I appreciate you. Peace. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Give it up for Andrew Barrow, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to everyone who was kind enough to tip the talent this evening. Like we said, Mahogany is going to reach out to the first 10 people that gave a tip of at least $5 so she can mail your Just Be You thank you gift directly to you. So it's still time to tip. So let's show this artist some love and give them a chance to shout out their peoples. First and foremost, the lovely Miss Adora Danye. Any shout outs you want to give out? Uh, okay. Um... Uh, shout out to my family, uh, the people that are on through um, through me. Um, how are you guys? Mm -hmm. Blessings, love, um, chocolate vibes. <laughs> uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mommies. And happy Mother's Day to all the daddies. Digging the chocolate vibes there. Me, Ray Velarki. Hi, shout out to all my friends and and co-workers in New York City, France, the West Coast, Portland. And then this little ditty came into my head. We want to be tipped by you, just you. Nobody else but you. We want to be tipped by you alone. <laughs> I love that. Aquia Doku. Yes. Hi. Where are you running to, girl? <laughs> Just checking my teeth. Um, <laughs> uh, shout out to my family, brother, happy birthday, Broadway Comedy Club, all the comics that I know who I'm not going to name because there's too many of them. Um, I hope they're doing well. Um, what else? Yeah. Shout out to everyone at Mahogany for putting this thing together. Thank you. You got great energy. So do you, Arthur. This has been amazing. Um, and all the other comedians and uh, singers, it's been a great night. Thank you all. Thank you. Max, before you begin, I have to tell you, I have to follow your career because I have to announce you. I mean, I just have to say, Dr. Max Shepard, for the rest of my life, I just have to. <laughs> Give us a shout out, girl. 
All right. Well, everyone, I want to shout out to everybody out there who's listening. Thank you. All my friends, family, everybody who's watching, anybody who will be watching. And I love all these people who I'm working with tonight. And I hope I get to see them again. So shout out to all you people, especially from New Jersey. I hope I get to see you guys. And uh, that's about it. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. All right. All right. Miss Deanna Kobe. Thank you, Miss Mahogany so much. I love, yeah, it's always so fun. And thank you, Mr. Arthur Gregory Pugh. Is that British? Are you um, British? Might be Irish, but I'm not 100% sure. You've got a very like distinguished vibe. So thank you to you and happy Mother's Day to all the mamas. You guys are superheroes. So thank you for doing what you do and have a beautiful day with the people you love. All right. And last but never least, Mr. Andrew Barrow. Hey, um, shout out to everybody that watched this. Um, shout out to my lady for watching this and posting it. That was wonderful. Uh, shout out to my mom. Shout out to my family. Shout out to my friends who watched. That was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, I definitely would have ended with the closer I wanted, but, you know, technical difficulties and it is what it is. It's all good. I hope you tipped because I'm broke. So I definitely need money. Um, so thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. Now to close out this Mother's Day extravaganza, Miss Mahogany has a surprise performance for you. All right, everybody. Now I've been keeping my eye on the time. We have been live for almost two hours and we have had so much fun. I'm just trying to make sure my Wi-Fi connection stays strong. Andrew, that was the technical difficulty. You can blame me. Well, rather you can blame my internet company. It's not my fault, honey. <laughs> so listen, Andrew is going to be back on Just For You After Dark. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to tell you exactly when, but you need to follow the show because he's going to be back. So everything that he wasn't able to say and do in this uh, show, he definitely will have the platform and the mic on that next episode. So please follow him. Follow Just For You Performing Arts, Just For You After Dark. Follow all of the artists. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Come on. I want everybody that's watching in the comment section, put a clap, put a smile, put a heart, put a laugh. Let us know that you enjoyed this show tonight. It's so many people that are struggling because of this situation. People lost their jobs. People lost their lives. People lost their marriages. People lost their children. People lost a lot of stuff. And I just said to myself, we got to do something to spread some joy while everybody's spreading germs. Wear your mask. Don't forget that the first 10 people who make a donation to tip the talent, I have these masks. You can put them over those surgical ones when you go to the store, honey, especially for the single lady. You never know who you might attract with one of these, child. Or you could just wear one around the house just to be cute, you know, for all the married mamas. And there's some other things I'm going to be putting in there as well. So listen, my talent does not know that I'm getting ready to do this. So they're going to have to participate anyway, whether they like it or not. So everybody, we are going to sing out this show. All right. So I'm going to start it off. You ain't got to sound like a Dora. Can't everybody be a Dora Danye, okay? <laughs> all right. So just be you. Be yourself. I'm going to start it off, all right? And then I'm going to pass the virtual mic on to someone else. So let me get my little list so I know exactly who I'm passing it to. Okay, so I'm just going to say your first name. And when I say your first name, you just sing the same song, but in your own way. Or you can rap it. You can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> this is going to be our way of letting everybody know that's watching that nothing can take your light out but you. There is no pandemic, there is no problem, there is no person that can block your hustle but you. You got to make sure that no matter what's going on around you, that you are clear about who you are and where you're going. Don't let nobody turn your light out, okay? Y'all hear that? All right, y'all ready? 
And here I go. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Max, go. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And that's it. <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it, let it, let it. Let it. Let it. Beyonce sound too. Don't cover me, Beehive. Do not cover me, Beehive. Do not cover me. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Awesome! I love it, me ready. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. <laughs> Very nice, Andrew. Oh my God. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. I feel like I'm a church. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. <laughs> show tonight i really appreciate you virtual kisses virtual hugs i really wish all of you well and for those of you who tuned in for this episode of just for you after dark with me your host mahogany Venice, 
I want to let you know that everything is going to be okay somehow, some way. Don't stress about stuff you don't have any control over and focus on you and your family. All right. So if you didn't watch this episode all the way and you want to catch it, just let Facebook kind of like do its thing. And then you can start a watch party, honey, because that's what I'm going to do. Get you a little drink and drink. Invite your mom, friends, pop you some popcorn, and have a good time. Happy Mother's Day. And don't forget what I always say. And after that, I'm signing off. Be blessed and just be you. Love y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Oh, this was so fun. Awesome. 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 Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Just For You After Dark.